Hello gamers out there guys, welcome to the MMO news. Before we get into that though, I do want to say thank you everybody. We've reached a milestone with the channel recently, actually just last week I do believe we did pass the 4,000 hours of watch time. So now it's just pushing on to get those 500 subscribers. Just a few short months ago I decided to pick this channel up. I really wanted to focus on specific things, that mostly being gaming, MMOs, RPGs. Uh, currently in the works, I almost have the next Skyrim, my favorite follower mods done, as well as another playthrough with Fallout 4 Sim Cities and another mod video for Fallout 4 as well. Next big milestone will be the 500 subscribers, which we're almost at. We're, we're just short 50 subscribers away, so if you guys do enjoy the content, please go ahead, subscribe, like to the video, and let's get straight to it. MMO news now. Diablo Immortal. Diablo, Diablo. All things aside, I want to focus on a recent article and blog on the Blizzard website stated that in a near future update, they will be giving players the option to class change. With most all MMOs and online games, individual player progression is the reason players log in and play day after day. And like many other online and MMO games, Diablo Immortal offers a variety of classes intended for you to try out and find out what you most like to play. Currently, the only way that you can do this is to start a new class and progress through the game again and this most often time discourages people from trying to take the time away to focus on these new classes now no date has been given for the class change yet but we were informed that class changes will only require one class pack at the price of 44.95 i'm just kidding class changes will actually take place in west march and they did let us know that progression on the Paragon levels, the Herodric vessels, along with the Heliquary progression will all be retained. Equipped and stashed gear, class specific legendaries will be kept, and we will be given a new set of equipment to transfer item progression and gems to. A new character customization will appear the first time you switch to a new class, and will then remain persistent when you switch back again. And in other news, the game's Chinese launch, you may have heard, has been delayed following a post from the Weibo account, which allegedly compared the Chinese leader to the children's cartoon character Winnie the Pooh uh, hopefully hopefully we'll have some further updates on this uh, now let's get to something else Terra yep it closed down uh, PC version of the game did close down on June 30th but as of a couple days ago the Xbox and PlayStation versions were still playable I've never played the console versions of the game so I don't know if they're still going if they're just gonna maybe funnel some of the PC content slowly over to the console maybe it doesn't have it all so yeah servers closed bye Terra all right, so the other day, Steven and several of the other devs and members of the team showcased the heavy and light melee combat. I actually put a video on this. This is a rework of the previous combat system that we saw in the Alpha 1, and a lot of people were very critical of this game showcase, but I feel like this new root and split motion combat system is a move in the right direction. Uh, the character animations and the weight behind the heavy weapons, I think it looked good. Uh, and the game isn't even in Alpha 2 yet. They haven't even released a date for Alpha 2. They scrapped the original combat system due to player feedback. And they saw the need to focus on something different. They went ahead and did that. I want to stay positive. I feel like this team really is trying to create something new. People were criticizing like, oh, they have such a great team and this is all that they can do. They took the original base idea of combat. They scrapped it. They made a brand new one. I think it looks better. It's not done yet. Again, Alpha 2 hasn't even been released. A date, nothing. Let's stay positive because I really want this game to be good. And last, we're going to take a look at the current MMO that I am playing, and that's Final Fantasy XIV. And they just released patch 6.18. It went live on the 5th of July. The patch included a bunch of PvP class changes and balances. There was a few things here with the battle system, increased chest, yada, 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 yada. But we all know what we were waiting for with this patch. And that was data center travel. This has been talked about and promised. And then they decided that it wasn't ready yet. And they kept putting it off and putting it off. Well, it officially went live. And as soon as it did, they had to stop it. Because they were getting, I do believe, 15,000 requests per minute. 
when the feature first went live so because of that they did suspend it temporarily and then slowly added it back in without really letting the player base know that way everybody wasn't rushing and trying to jump in and switch data centers and what i want to do i'm just going to go ahead and take a quick look at the patch notes and we're going to look at everything that's included with the data center transfer i also want to note that there was the creation of a brand new data center and this was over in japan and there was an additional four worlds added to the chaos and light data center in the european servers and not to partake in this lovely little data center transfer visitation thing that we can do now it's going to be a little bit different instead of doing it while you're logged in game you're going to do this from the character creation screen you're going to choose an avatar and you're going to select visit another data center from the menu you'll then be given an option of data centers that are available for you to travel to you'll go ahead click on that you'll get a confirmation screen and then you'll be put in queue to proceed on to the new data center now the data center transfer, the time required for it is just going to depend on the congestion of the world that you're trying to move over to. Once that's done though, it's going to go ahead and bring up the appropriate data center, allow you to select it, and then it'll allow you to log in. And then any players that are visiting a data center are going to be given the traveler tag and that will be displayed on their nameplate. As for restrictions, there obviously are going to be restrictions when visiting other data centers. Legendary and unspoiled gathering nodes are going to be inaccessible you can't summon your retainers you can't release or hire new ones you cannot put items on the market board but you are able to purchase from the market board you cannot form or join free companies on a different data center free company information that you're in cannot be viewed company credits can't be earned and free company chat cannot be used to send or receive messages link shells as well information cannot be viewed you cannot create or join new ones and link shells cannot be used to send or receive messages and then with fellowships uh, fellowship information in your home world will not be able to be viewed travelers cannot form or join fellowships obviously when they're on a different data center housing again estates and apartments are not going to be able to be purchased when you're visiting resident sharing is not available ceremonies of eternal bonding are not available and this one here invitations to ceremonies cannot be offered to players on other data centers Centers, you're still going to have to do that with an alt. Uh, as for the gold saucer, the Lord of Verminian tournaments cannot be entered, triple triad tournaments, nope. And you cannot be playing that jumbo cack pot. So don't think you can jump over there and steal all their money. As for deep dungeons, your results are not going to be saved on the leaderboard. In PvP, the crystalline conflict, rank matches are unavailable. PvP information cannot be viewed. PvP teams cannot be joined. PvP teams cannot be used to send or receive messages either. You're not going to be able to use your mail, so no Moogle delivery service. And as for teleportation, the Eternity Rings may only be used when both players are on the same roll. That obviously makes sense. You can only use a pendulum to teleport if both of the players are on the same world as well. And you can only teleport to a friend's estate when you are on their home world. Clearly, obviously, that makes sense. So there's a lot of restrictions, but we knew they were going to be. But the good news is they did finally get this done. I don't know what exactly was holding them up before, but they were very confident that it just wasn't ready yet. And as we see, as soon as it came out, it was causing all kinds of problems, but they were able to let that first heavy wave get through. And since then, it's been fine. I've heard some people waiting up to 45 to 50 minutes for data center transfer. But again, that's going to be based on the congestion of the world that you're currently trying to get to. So guys, this is Maze. Again, 50, 50 subscribers away from hitting that 500 mark. It would be amazing in the month of July to not only hit the 4,000 hours of watch time, which we already did, but to also hit that 500, then 600, then 700 subscribers. But anyways, I'm going to be finishing up part two of my favorite Skyrim follower mods. And until then, everybody stay safe.